Greetings everyone. Today we're going to learn about voltage and current, inductance and capacitance and resistance, what all, what all of them are. So in order to understand what voltage and current are, we're going to use an analogy of gas in a pipe, which I've drawn over here. When I apply a pressure, P, to the pipe, it makes the gas molecules in the pipe move with a velocity, V. And that's the same as though I apply a voltage to the end of the wire. It puts a force on the electrons in the wire and makes those electrons move. The movement of those electrons we call current. So in this analogy, voltage is exactly like a pressure. It puts a force on the molecules and the current is exactly analogous to the velocity of the movement of molecules. So what is the resistance? Well, here I've drawn a little circuit uh, to which I apply a voltage, and the voltage, just like a pressure, forces electrons or current to, to move through the resistor. And the analogy of the pipe would be that I take my pipe and in the middle I put a section which is much smaller now, when I apply a pressure, it forces the mole gas molecules down, but they get stuck in this small area, like a bottleneck. They're restricted. In other words, this small area restricts the velocity or flow of the gas molecules. And that's exactly what a resistance is or does. It restricts the flow of current. Okay, so what is inductance? Well, here I've drawn an inductor. It's basically just a coil of wire. It can be wrapped around a steel core or a ferrite core or just an air core. And inductors have a value which we call inductance. Inductance is simply a number, but it tells us that if we were to apply a certain voltage, we could calculate the rate of change of current or the rate of increase of current in that inductor. In an, if we were to take a mechanical analogy, we could look at a mass on a surface of ice. The mass could be anything, but if we were to apply a force to that mass, then that mass will begin to move with a velocity v. In the same way, when we apply a voltage to our inductor, the current in the inductor would begin to increase. But when we apply a force to our mass here, we would not only get a vol uh, velocity, but the velocity would actually increase. In other words, the mass would begin to accelerate. And in the same way, when we apply a voltage and current, we get a current in our inductor, the current is not simply fixed, but increases. That's why we have the rate of change of current here. Now, in the mechanical analogy, when we apply a force to our mass, and the mass begins to move, if we were then to remove our force, the mass would continue to move on its own, because the mass has a property which we call momentum or inertia. And in the same way, when we have current and voltage across our inductor, and then we were to remove the voltage and stop the current, the magnetic field in the inductor would collapse. And because of induction, this would try to force current in the same direction as it was flowing before. So the inductor exhibits a type of momentum or inertia in the same way that the mass does. Now, if we were to look at this equation, for a fixed voltage and a fixed inductance, we could calculate how quickly the current increases, changes in our inductor. But if I was to keep that voltage the same, but then increase the inductance, then the rate of change of current would go down. So we can see from this equation that the inductance of an inductor or the inductor acts like an impedance to the rate of change of current. So if we take a look at what a capacitance is, Here I've drawn a capacitor, usually it's just two plates of metal near together and capacitors have a value which we call capacitance. And capacitance is simply a number or value which allows us to calculate the rate of change of voltage on the capacitor if we put current into that capacitor. Now the mechanical analogy of a capacitor is a spring. And the spring, we can compress the spring or we can stretch the spring. When the spring is compressed or stretched, the spring stores energy. And in the same way, when we put charge, which is electrons, onto the capacitor, the capacitor becomes charged. And then it stores energy like that. Now notice that uh, when electrons are on the capacitor plate, those electrons are not moving. And the capacitor stores energy and the electrons are motionless. 
In the same way, when we store energy in the spring by compressing it, the spring is motionless. So the spring and the capacitor store energy uh, in the form of a motionless type of energy, and we call that energy potential energy. Uh, but in the case of the mass, the mass stores energy in the form of momentum because it's moving, and in the same way the inductor stores energy uh, because the electrons inside it are moving. So the inductor and the mass, moving mass, store energy uh, because that in the form of a uh, motion or energy type, which we call kinetic energy. Now if we were to take a look at this equation for the capacitor here, you can see that uh, for a given current and given capacitance, we know how quickly the voltage will change on the capacitor. And for a given, if I was to keep the current the same, but increase the capacitance, then the rate of change of voltage would go down. So we can see that the capacitor or the capacitance acts like an impedance for the rate of change of voltage. Now we can go one step further and we can take our inductance and capacitance and attach them together like I've drawn here and we get this like a little circuit and in the same way we can take our mass and our spring and attach them together but except this time I've drawn the spring and mass hanging from a fixed ceiling. So if we were to take this mass and just move it then it could oscillate up and down and store energy in the form of oscillation and in the same way if we put some energy into this uh, circuit this would act like a resonator and the current and voltage would simply slosh backwards and forwards in this case. Now the reason that this inductor and capacitor can form a resonator or an oscillator and the mass and the spring can form an oscillator is because the energy inside these two things is oscillating between the energy where it's a type of motion, meaning kinetic energy, and the energy where it's a, a motionless type of energy, which is potential energy. So the energy uh, oscillates backwards and forwards between the two types. This one is the kinetic energy, and this type is the potential energy. So I hope that's clear, and uh, I hope that you enjoy the video. If you'd like to support the channel, you can use the links below or simply by subscribing. Thanks a lot.